William Byron goes to victory lane for the fifth time in the 2023 season at Watkins Glen. An impressive run, but Todd, a week ago at Indy, we said he was one of the best cars, started the back, drove mid-pack. He proved it this week. Yeah, definitely carried this momentum that he had at Indy forward to Watkins Glen. A solid qualifying effort, started on the front row, and uh, dominated the race once he got control of it. Yeah, much like Indianapolis, qualifying absolutely mattered. He qualified on the front row, but lost a spot right on the green flag. Was overtaken by Mike McDowell, blended into third, but quickly made up for it. Yeah, Michael McDowell aggressive on that initial start and aggressive through the start of the race. He, he got to the point he put Denny Hamlin in a vulnerable position up through the S's. William Byron took advantage of that. Ultimately, lap three, that was the pass for the win. Yeah, hard to believe. Lap three of a 90-lap race. Denny Hamlin would go on to say that Michael was aggressive early, and it took him a few laps to figure it out, but it's never that simple. When we look at Watkins Glen, it really comes down to two cycles of pit stops. So Michael McDowell now has the lead. William Byron second. Remember, McDowell gets a penalty, but nobody knows this at this point. William Byron overcomes the 34 for the lead on the first pit cycle. It starts right after the end of stage one. Leaders come to pit road. McDowell first, Byron stays out for clean track. Yeah, got the clean track and took the most of it. Took it, you know that, you, you mentioned it, but the Formula One style. Go yeah. get it when you got light fuel load, you got clean air, got clean racetrack. William did a great job of cutting a good lap here. I think a half a second faster time coming to pit road than what McDowell did on the lap previously. Yeah, because of traffic. So he runs a half a second faster than McDowell coming to pit road. He comes down pit road, makes his pit stop, uh, and in the end blends out in front of McDowell. He gained a little bit everywhere. The big point for McDowell, a half second on the racetrack, a two and a half, almost three second faster pit stop was the difference with McDowell, but he also extended his lead for Denny Hamlin from six tenths of a second to 1.2 seconds, but a little bit everywhere. Yeah, that was two tenths here, two tenths there, two tenths there. All, all facets kind of brought it together to get him a little bit bigger lead. And the fact that Denny was racing with Michael McDowell leaving pit road because he came to pit road with him, I think that put him in a position as well. Yeah, if all of those little pieces flip, and that's Denny Hamlin making it up on William Byron. I argue that Denny passes him back through the pit cycle. Uh, so good move by the 24 running the extra lap. Great work by the pit crew. Great work by the driver. So now the 24 is leading the race. Another pit stop's required. We're getting inside the fuel window. And this is kind of every crew chief's nightmare, a caution during the pit cycle. So we're past lap 50, we're getting into that pit window. The nine car starts running out of gas, sputtering up the S's on the same lap. Uh, Byron comes to pit road. Let's take a look at just how close this was. This was Byron coming to pit road. First of all, we want to prove, look, light right here. I'm going to circle it. Everybody wants to know if he made it. He made it. It's a green flag. The rule is you must cross over that yellow line under a green flag. That is the green light. If the caution would have been out, the light would be red. He could just pass through without a penalty. If he stopped, it would be a penalty. Yeah, well done. And this is like within a 20 second window of when the caution actually comes out. A good commitment by Rudy Fugel to get him to pit road ahead of that. Unlike some of the other players, Kyle Busch, who had a top 10 run going, didn't make it to this one, ended up cycled back to a 17th place finish for the day. I want to emphasize that, 20 seconds. So if the caution comes out 20 seconds earlier, William Byron doesn't get on pit road under green. He gets cycled back. I don't believe there's any way the 24 wins the race from outside the top five or seven. We didn't feel that way coming into it. You felt like qualifying on Saturday that was that big a deal. If you cycled yourself back, we saw it out of Michael McDowell with his pit issues and penalties. He did get himself back. He drove forward some, but I didn't feel like he could get back to the lead. Yeah, so the yellow did come out. The field was bunched up. It was a restart. The only one we saw during the race, but in the end, uh, William Byron, nice restart and great closing laps, not making a mistake as the top five was right on his rear bumper, goes on to win his fifth race. But unfortunately for Hendrick Motorsports, it was not all positive because the driver they needed to win more than William Byron was Alex Bowman or Chase Elliott. And Chase Elliott, such great numbers at Watkins Glen, uh, just never had what looked like winning speed. Let's start at the beginning of the week. Yeah, definitely. I thought practice he didn't show the pace that the the five and the 24 the uh, two of his teammates did it seemed like it kind of came as practice went along but you look at qualifying and chase criticized himself immensely for it but you qualify in the 14th 15th range you're not going to win these these road course races yeah why does that matter think about this in the history of the next gen car only once has the winner at a road course started outside the top 10 and that was all the way back to coda a year ago when it was Ross Chastain. So they knew 
They had an uphill battle. Alan Gustafson, aggressive early, pits at lap 17 from about the 13th position. When that pit cycle cycles through, he's all the way up to seventh, making ground, and then it all falls apart. Yeah, definitely. When you that, that commitment to pit early, be aggressive on that. Lap 17, put him in a situation where he needed to go 37 and 36 laps to make this race finish. They ran out of fuel on 37 and a half. Seemed like a little bit of a stretch for him, but a, 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 a tough situation there. So let's walk through this because it, it's, it's a little more complicated than just running out of gas. Let's listen into the radio, the communication between crew chief Alan Gustafson and driver Chase Elliott about their fuel situation. 10 more, we're gonna run to the switch. It'll be on you. We have three laps on the switch. So you will pass me twice once you switch it. Pass you twice. Yeah, copy. 10 more to the switch. Pass me twice. Let me know when you hit it. Just take care of those rears. Nice and smooth. So that's Alan explaining to Chase that, hey, we're going to run about 10 more laps. You're going to basically run to the switch. What that means is you're going to run until this car stumbles. You're going to flip the switch, which will activate that second pickup in the fuel cell. And then surprisingly, he says, you're going to come by me two more times and then pit. That's attempting to run three laps. I, that's, that's immense to me. I always, it was next lap. For, for me in any of those situations. I know this fuel cell is different than what I dealt with, but that's a lot of fuel. That's counting on having another 1.5, 1.6 gallons in reserve. Uh, seems like a stretch and it, it ultimately was. It was, so let's take a listen to Chase when they ultimately ran out of gas. I'm buttered. I'm on two, I'm out of gas. I know, just come to us whenever you can for all the information. I ain't gonna make it, so I guess I just stop here. Yeah, you're not gonna like it. He had to end up stopping on the backstretch. You heard Alan say misinformation, miscommunication. It goes back to what you were saying. I'm not sure what happened, but the math just doesn't work. I think three laps on the second pit stop is more than anyone in the garage thinks they can go. Hey, there's two pieces to this. It's three laps is much longer than I think anybody thinks in, in the garage that they could go. Also, you've already made 30, you came to 37 laps under power. That's all you needed to do. You needed to go 37 and 36. I would have pitted him the lap before knowing I had hit my 37 lap number. So in the end, I like the aggression. I think it was needed from where they qualified, but a mistake. And there's no other way, way to label this. A mistake by Hendrick Motorsports and the nine team running out of gas ends their chance of winning at Watkins Glen. Now it's a must win at Daytona if Chase wants to continue his playoff run. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Just got to go win. Well, the driver that did win his way into the playoffs, Mike McDowell back at the Indy Road Course, was the favorite heading to Watkins Glen, and he showed up. He had speed, he qualified good, and he was leading the race until a mistake on pit road. He drove through too many pit boxes on the first pit stop. Let's take a look. He's on pit road here. He's going to turn right into his stall. The empty box is stall one, the 99, now the four. Justin Haley, that's four pit stalls. You're only allowed to drive through three, a penalty. Yeah, you're only given three, and it is. It's a straightforward penalty for NASCAR to call here. Michael McDowell, I think a couple things there, right, right hand pit stops, it's uncomfortable for the drivers, not knowing how to commit in, where he's turning into, it's a little different there. The other piece is we'll hear in the audio, Michael's under the impression that that open pit stall, the first one he went through, isn't in play, and that's an error on his part. In a picture, we're gonna have to serve the penalty. They're saying that that killed box is where you are into it. You can't go through that one, you can only start at the 99. Well, because I drove through the empty box, is correct uh, empty box because it's an uh, actual pit stall is what they're counting as what you can't drive through it's not like an opening all right so you called it michael mcdowell thought the empty pit stall was his to use crew chief travis peterson was on top of the rules so let's just take a look right here this is the 34 box right so here's pit stall one he can use two he can use three he can use the one in question is right here no pit box it's an open stall so Michael thinks he can drive through all of those boxes, and he could if that wasn't a pit stall. If that was an opening, he would have been okay, but because it's a pit stall, it can't be used. Yeah, there are pit stalls because we have 36 entries and we've got multiple there are pit stalls that aren't in use, but they're dictated. They are counted for entry and exit of your pit road, and that's given to all the crew chiefs weekly on a pit road map as we look at here. Yeah, so how did Travis know? I'm gonna give him credit, doing his homework. He knew, right? So clearly labeled the red box, not being used, doesn't count. But then they list both green, blue, black, what that looks like. The 34 car was talking about right here. I'm gonna highlight it, right? This is where he was at. That black box right there coming in in this direction, that was the one he drove through. That was the penalty. So 
Travis did his homework. He knew Michael McDowell didn't know. There's so many details to these races. This will be a mistake Michael doesn't make again. Yeah, definitely will be. It's just one of those things in a week that's packed after a victory and a lot of things going on. Maybe it's a slight miss, but I'm sure he'll be aware of the details going forward. Well, there was a bright spot for the 34 team. They won that first stage. They got that playoff point, which they will carry on into the playoffs because he won. He knows he's in, but now we're there. The end of the regular season, one race remains, one spot remains, currently held by Bubba Wallace. But think about this. Of all the drivers not locked in, seven of them have won at Daytona or Talladega. Is it a must-win situation for Bubba heading this weekend? You're going to have to see how it plays out because I think you can go either way on this. Depends on, we've got a lot of winners that are good speedway racers as well, but I think they have to look at it like they're going to race the race to have a win, but they've got to have it in their back pocket that that 32 point separation they have to Ty Gibbs, it's a good one. Let's see if we can maintain some of that. All right, you just talked me in a circle. Be conservative, a go to win. And, and I laugh, but that is exactly what this team is going to have to battle. If it's me, it's clear. I'm going to tell Bubba, from green flag to checkered flag, we are here to win the race. The only time that would change is if in the closing laps, it looks like everyone we're racing are current race winners. Then and only then would I change the plan. Yeah, I might, I might play it conservative for stage one just to see where we were to get, if we can get some stage points, let that one work, work itself out. But it's a tough call and, and one that there's no good, good way to call it. Well, there are a lot of stories. The big story is who makes the playoffs. The other story is where they end up when the playoffs start. Let's look at the regular season standings. Truex currently on top. Hamlin can't catch him on points. We'll have to see how that works out. 15 points for Truex if he wins the regular season. But the most important thing to point out in my mind heading to Daytona, from Brad Keselowski all the way back to Tyler Reddick, from 6 to 12 is only 14 points. Yeah, it's, it's, that can change immensely. And when you look at this, it, if you look at the numbers that are beside this, the 15, the plus 10, the plus 8, that's how many points you get for finishing in that position, the regular season points. So Brad Keselowski right now has five points from his regular season. It's going to be added to his, his bonus point. If he has a poor weekend, he could shuffle all the way out of the top 10 and lose that. There's a race win hanging for these guys to, to perform here at Daytona. And as unknown as that place is, we could see this 6th to 14th all jumble up. So how much does it move? Let's set the field. Let's take a look. William Byron have 2036. That means he did great job in the regular season. He's won some races, five, not some, five. I was trying to short the guy. But you go all the way down to Blaney, right? Reddick, Keselowski, look at the right side. Look how close those points totals are. So when you think there's a three, four, five, six point swing available, it could change the seating dramatically. This currently has Bubba in at 2000. Well, what if Bubba goes down there and wins the race, wins both stages, just like that? That's seven more points. He moves up instantly. Yeah, yeah, it, it could, this could change a lot. And especially that, that group from six on back in points, it'll move one or two and one or two could put you two, three, four spots in the grid here. You don't wanna be in that position come race three of, of round one. Yeah, we have seen every point matter in the playoffs. We've seen every point matter in making the playoffs, but it's that time of the year. 25 races ago, we started the season at Daytona with the Daytona 500. Now race 26, back under the lights, Saturday night on the high banks at the World Center of Racing.